Welcome. In this section, I'm going to discuss about gas lift fundamentals. So gas lift is an artificial lift technique that can be used, for example, to increase production rate from natural flow. The well producing at natural flow, uh, the rate might be too low, so it's not profitable and must be increased. Or simply you want to increase the rate that the well produces at natural flow. Another reason could be to enable production. If the well is put to natural flow, simply it won't produce. If you have a stagnant column of fluid in the well board. And also, um, maybe to improve well flow. Let's say you have transients, you have slogging, and gas leaf sometimes can help with that. So the focus of this lecture is going to be continuous gas lift, the version in which we are continuously injecting an amount of gas to the annulus and entering into the tubing. But, um, and the, but there are some other variations, uh, intermittent gas lift, that we are not going to discuss here, but they also exist. So consider this uh, diagram we have to the left. We have a vertical well. Uh, here we have the wellhead. Uh, we have the tubing and we have the bottom hole. And uh, the curve of pressure available at the bottom hole, seen from the reservoir, that's essentially flow from reservoir pressure to through the formation and into the wellbore. That's called the inflow performance relationship, and it's this green curve to the right, how it's changing with rate of oil. And then if we look at the pressure required at the bottom of the tubing to flow against a constant wellhead pressure, uh, that's what we call the TPR, which is the tubing performance relationship, and uh, that looks like that. Okay, you have this uh, uh, minimum point here because we are talking it's a multi-phase flow. We have flow of oil and, and gas in the tubing. So here you have the intersection. What happens, the, the system, if you put these two together, this uh, curve and that curve is going to operate at that rate. And essentially what we want is want to affect gas lift, I'm aiming to affect the blue curve such that the intersection is more to the right. So I get a higher rate intersection, a higher rate due to the intersection. So one could visualize that the energy loss uh, along the tubing from uh, bottom hole to wellhead is, uh, I can present that with a delta P, and that delta P is the P bottom hole minus the P at the wellhead. And that typically has three components, as we have seen before. So we have the delta P hydrostatic. We have the delta P frictional. And we have the delta P acceleration. And typically acceleration is usually much smaller than the other two. And typically, for many cases, the frictional part is only a fraction of the hydrostatic. For example, 30% of the pressure drop might be due to the frictional, but then a big part, 70% or, or something like that, can be due to the hydrostatic. And even though we know we have to make integration along the, along the wellbore, uh, we know that this term we can express is going to look something like density of the mixture times g times uh, the difference in height. We know that this term is going to look something like uh, the density of the mixture times um, friction factor, L length divided by the diameter, d squared divided by two. So the main goal of gas lift is try to reduce this density of the mixture. We know that the density of the mixture is bounded is usually bounded between density of the gas and density of the liquid. And my intention with gas lift is to make it more similar to the density of the gas, is to reduce it and make it more similar to the density of the gas. If you remember the expression for this density, this density I essentially need the holdup of gas times density of gas plus holdup of liquid times the density of liquid. And the holdup, if you remember, is the section, uh, the holdup is the gas is uh, uh, the area of gas that the uh, gas is occupying in the total cross section area of the pipe. Okay, so if we are going to make a, a, a diagram of our pipe, and then we, we neglecting flow patterns, we are saying that we are simplifying and making and putting all the phase on one side, all the liquid on one side, and all the gas on one side. Although this is not the, re, the, 
actual case, we could say that, for example, in this case, you have a very low gas holdup, so then the density of the mixture is going to be closer to the density of the liquid. Yeah, but you might have, might have another case where what I want to try to do with gas lift is to reach a case in which I have maybe something like this. In which I have the holdup of gas is very high. And then we know that the density of the gas of the mixture is tending to be the density of the gas. So by doing that, essentially I'm reducing this uh, hydrostatic term because this guy is going to be smaller and also I'm sort of trying to reduce the frictional part and uh, then that reduces the pressure drop that I have uh, in the tubing. And hopefully that is going to affect this curve and it's going to make the intersection more to the right. So how I achieve that is I put some equipment in the tubing that allows to have communication between the annulus and the tubing and then I inject gas typically is from the annular a master valve and then I inject it through the annulus and then it's merged with the fluid. So with this I am achieving, I'm, I'm inserting more gas into the tubing and I'm trying to achieve that the density of the mixture becomes closer to the density of the gas. But one thing that I also, it also happens is that uh, then the rate that the tubing is carrying is higher and if the rate is higher then also this velocity is going to be higher. So let's say you have here two terms, you have one and two. So the goal with gas lift is to reduce two. Is to reduce one. But then uh, uh, a side effect of that is that I'm also increasing two because I'm adding more fluid into the tubing. Okay, so I'm reducing this one, but I'm also sort of increasing number two. Okay, so what you have to be sure when you're applying gas lift is that essentially the number one, the reduction in one, is much higher than what I obtain in the increasing two. That's the main goal. So we see, now that we know how gas lift is implemented, we can make a simplified sketch of what happens in the tubing. And we, because of that, we have to split the tubing into two parts. We have a wellhead, then we have the injection point, and then we have another part of tubing which goes down all the way to the bottom hole, PWF. So what comes uh, from here, from uh, the reservoir, is Q oil from the reservoir, and Q gas from the reservoir. So here, uh, circulating in this tubing, I have a GOR, that is a GOR that comes from the reservoir. GORR. And then here at some point I have the injection of gas coming in, Q gas injected. And then when it's circulating through this tubing, I have Q oil from the reservoir, I have Q gas from the reservoir, and I have Q gas injected. And then the GOR. GOR, the new GOR I have in that section is actually going to be different from the GOR I had from the previous section. Here I have the Q gas injection plus the Q gas of the reservoir divided by the Q oil from the reservoir. Okay, so the GOR star is bigger than the GOR from the reservoir. So that tells me that this curve and not anymore is going to look like that because not all the tubing, the flow in the tubing is not going to be with a constant GOR. I have to split into two parts. I have one part which has higher GOR and one that has lower GOR. So that curve should change, the blue curve. And our intention is that it will move towards the right. So but to avoid to having this complexity of different GORs in different parts of the tubing, let's take a more simplified uh, version of gas lift like a poor boy like gas lift, which consists, uh, I'm going to again inject through the annulus. We're going to assume there is no packer at the bottom, and that simply all the gas that I'm injecting is being pushed at the bottom of the tubing. So in that case, and the, the PWF, the bottom hole pressure, is very close to the inlet of the, of the tubing, at the bottom of the tubing. So essentially we can say here that all, all tubing 
uh, has the GUR star that we mentioned here. So essentially, no part of the tubing is operating at uh, a low G, a low GUR, at the reservoir GUR. So how that curve looks like? Uh, typically, it looks something like that. So it's lower than the previous. looks something like that. Okay, so this is my new TPR, again for the same wall head pressure as before. Okay, but now the GOR is going to be GOR star. Again, this is with gas leaf. And you see we achieve exactly what we were expecting, that the rate now, the intersection is more to the right, and the rate is, is higher. This, this is QO in natural, natural flow, and this is QO at gas lift. Okay, let's call it QO star. This is uh, something I have done intentional in this curve is that um, you see for very high rates then the red curve actually goes above the blue curve. And that's because uh, in, for these cases the rates are very high and if the rates are very high then the frictional part is actually number two is more important than the reduction you get in number one. And this, uh, this term, you, you see it's uh, square, so actually this grows very quickly with rate compared to the density, which is increasing simply linearly or is decreasing linearly. So for very high rates, this is increasing very much and might be that it is more than the, than the blue curve. Okay. So let's talk about something else, which is the gas lift performance curve, because this uh, situation that I get more and more rate doesn't continue forever. Okay, at some point, uh, what happens if I, let's say, increase, uh, I don't want to spoil my figure, but if I, let's say, increase the GUR, you maybe get something like that, but at some point you start to see a reverse in trend. Uh, let's take, pick another color. You start to see that a reverse in trend. So for this situation that I have painted here, this is increasing GUR, you have the red one. Increasing GUR, you have this uh, violet one. And then you increase the GR and then you go back and you find the pink one. So essentially it's not that increasing GR and injecting more and more gas, you're always going to have an intersection more and more to the right, but at some point it's going to start to reverse. It's going to go back. Because of this issue of the frictional component. Okay, so uh, we're going to talk now about the gas lift uh, performance curve. that is going to look something like that, taking into account what we have uh, discussed just now. You're plotting Q oil from the reservoir versus Q gas injection. Here you have a zero, and this is typically made for a constant wellhead pressure. So if you the well is able to produce naturally, you will have a point here, different than zero, but if not, it will start from zero. When you have a well that cannot produce uh, naturally, uh, simply there is no intersection, so the blue curve doesn't have any intersection. It will be much higher than the green curve. But uh, by applying a gas, uh, in gas lift, then that curve is reduced and it actually is possible to achieve an intersection with the, with the uh, green curve. So this gas lift performance curve looks something like that. So initially you have a very sharp increase because you have a big reduction in the hydrostatic term and the frictional term doesn't grow very much. But at some point you reach a peak, a maximum, that's the maximum rate you can get. And then the frictional term starts to become very, very relevant compared to the hydrostatic, and then it starts to decrease. And typically the decrease is much more smoother than the increase. So that's how it looks like. And if we're going to plot also the wellhead, the bottom hole pressure, now on the same chart, let's remember uh, we, we can get this from the IPR. We have PWF and Q oil from the reservoir. We have something like that. And we know that if the rate of oil is uh, decreasing, so then that is increasing, that means that the PWF should be decreasing. So PWF does something like that. Here it reaches a minimum, and then it starts to increase back up. 
Okay, so it has a trend which is opposite to the trend of volume. So typically we want to be operating here at the maximum point, or we can express that mathematically as is the point where the derivative of Q oil, the derivative of Q gas injection is equal to zero. Okay, but pay attention that this actually initially the when I add some gas I get significant increase in rate of oil. But at some point when I'm very close to the maximum, this this uh, area is very flat. So it could be that simply by adding a lot of gas, and you see here the changes in gas might be very important, like 30% more gas, 50% more gas, I don't get much oil. Um, so for those cases, it's more useful, instead of talking about uh, simply the maximum of the curve, that might be very flat and might require a lot of gas to inject by and getting a little bit of oil back. So for those cases, it's more interesting to look into some sort of profit function. And that profit function has to be some revenue minus some cost. So let's, as an example, let's talk that a revenue function is some Q oil from the reservoir times the price that I'm selling that oil. And the cost is a function of the gas that I'm injecting, how much gas I'm injecting. And let's say uh, that cost function looks something like maybe a constant, the price of gas, maybe the cost of electricity for the compressors, maybe the processing, the, the energy I need for the processing stream, how much is it costing to process that gas to have it ready for, for injection, put it at high pressure, times the Q gas injection. So this is a very simple function, but it's going to illustrate uh, my point. And then what you want is that the profit to be, you want to maximize the profit. And you see it's not anymore simply so, uh, maximizing the rate of oil, but you are maximizing now some function. And to maximize, to find the maximum, you could say that you take the derivative of profit with respect to Q gas injection. And here we have the same derivative we have before. Times PO minus simply here we have pg because the derivative of the same variable is simply one okay so we end up with something like that that this is going to be equal to zero and then by clearing out we find out that the maximum is at a condition where the q uh, derivative of qo is going to be equal to pg divided by po this is a positive number and it's, it's very close typically very close to zero, depending on the numbers. Okay, if you have a very high, let's say you have a very high oil price, then this number is going to be similar to zero, or if you have a very low cost of processing gas, this is also going to be similar to zero. Okay, but it's not going to be zero. So essentially, let's say if you have a very relatively big number, that tells you that well, when this uh, derivative is equal to some positive number, that slope, that might be where I have my maximum, if that number is uh, big, this PG, this ratio of PG divided by PO. But if that ratio is small, it might be that you're actually closer to the point where simply is equal to zero. So you might be here. Okay, so depending on the ratio, that means that you that's where you should be operating. And that's a more sensible approach to use profit instead of simply production because of the how the characteristics of this region, because it's relatively flat and it takes a lot of changes in Q injection to get an increase in Q. Uh, oil.